We are back with a new edition of our series where we send lead national correspondent, that's David Bagno, on a storytelling adventure because we know David loves a good adventure. You know what else he loves? He loves to meet new people. So we surprised him yet again with a plane ticket and challenged him to find a story in just 48 hours. This time, lucky David, he landed in beautiful Monterey, California. It's a great place. As luck would have it, he found someone who has a story we can all learn from. Good to see you. Official documents. Okay, here we go. Right here. Monterey. Oh. It's a pretty quick trip from Los Angeles to Monterey, right along California's central coast. Here we go. Known for blue waters brimming with wildlife and the world famous Monterey Bay Aquarium. My team surprised me with a private early morning tour led by program director Natalia Hurley. Thanks for coming here. Never really. been. Oh, wow, even better. We love first timers. Let me tell you, I was mesmerized. It's almost meditative to look at. Oh, it. yeah, absolutely. <laughs> we Is have... he floating on his back? Oh, yeah. <laughs> These otters here take turns being surrogate moms to orphan wild pups mm. and then be released out into the wild. Hi. Renee Carbajal, a senior aquarist here. You're beautiful, you're beautiful. Cares for the octopus. She might want to get a meal. Let me tell you, he let me get so close. Oh, it feels so weird. <laughs> it's like she's holding my hand. She is. I got to feed an octopus breakfast, y'all. Hey, you, you're higher. <laughs> when I come in the mornings, I, I'll play my, my salsa music, and she'll she, she, she <laughs> recognize, oh, there's Renee. <laughs> Where are you from? I was born in uh, Mexico City. Oh. I went back to school in my late 30s. I graduated in marine biology. You did, at wow. UCLA. I have one of the best jobs in the world. Well, after that wild start to the day, I made my way down Cannery Row. In the early 20th century, it was where workers, mostly immigrants, canned sardines to be shipped around the world. The literary giant John Steinbeck captured the flavor of that life in his 1945 novel. Today, his statue stands where the tourists flock. We knew it was, it was you. you. We knew it was me. You were right. Where are y'all from? I'm from Tucson, Arizona. Tucson, Arizona. That was fun, but look, the clock was ticking. We only had 48 hours, and I wanted to do a little shopping. We've never been shopping on one of our Surprise City stores. This is the first. I love it. Pendleton shirts rose to popularity in the 60s. <laughs> thanks to the Beach Boys. Next, I popped into a bike shop. Don't look so surprised, I've got an English accent. <laughs> These are You're some ice bikes. Thank you. Owner Martin Watson helped me pick out some wheels. I'm fired up. Yeah, you should be. Fired up. I'm fired up too. With Watson and his bike-loving pup, Bella, we took in the spectacular views. You can smell the trees, the grass. This is unique. Yeah, you see, I them? see them? Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I left the wheels with him and headed to the Monterey Library, which was the very first in California. It's been a while since I've been to a library. Brian Edwards, the library and museum director, took me to Colton Hall because California's constitution was created right here in 1849. It was the first state constitution debated in English and in Spanish. What were they debating? What was the debate? Women's rights, whether it was gonna be a slave state or not. So California was progressive from the get-go from the get-go, from the very beginning. Edwards sees Monterey as the birthplace of California. It felt like time stopped as we quietly explored the vital wetlands with naturalist Marina Mays. Hear all that chatter? Yeah. <laughs> but as I moved forward, I kept coming back to Rene Carbajal. It was his humility, his story, the way he connected me with that octopus. I thought, David, <laughs> he's your story. This is cha cha cha. When I got there to surprise him, he was playing salsa music for the octopus he calls Chica. <laughs> Look at this. This yeah. is wild. Like no pun intended. This forever. <laughs> I can't eat calamari again. <laughs> She's just watching me, kind of like, okay, let's let's hang together. After spending almost 48 hours looking for people, uh -huh. I want to make you 20. the story. <laughs> oh wow! Thank yeah. you. I see you. Do you know what I loved? I loved your passion. 
Thank you. And, and, and that, that's how I feel every day, really, uh, that connectivity with the animal. It's just, um, it just takes me somewhere else. And, and there is nothing more beautiful at that moment than that time. Having that time together uh, makes me forget about everything else in the world. He grew up in Mexico and moved with his family to Los Angeles in the early 2000s. Six people shared a one-bedroom apartment, but he says he was happy, hopeful, and determined. Your first job in L.A. was doing what? I, I would make the hamburgers, I would clean the floors, and learning the language and working hard. As a hobby, he bought a small reef tank, and so began his passion for sea life. He learned to scuba dive, then took out loans to become the first in his family to go to college. Honestly, I got a lot of doors that shut down in front of my face. One of my professors said that you just had to be a grain in the sand that is more shiny than the other ones, and, and, and that will get you there. And, and a I grain in the sand more shiny than <laughs> the other ones. That's a good piece of advice. I thought I could do it and never give up, and this is where, where I am. <laughs> Passion-fueled and results-driven, Carbajal became a United States citizen. He met his wife, Joanna, in Monterey, and together they are raising two octopus-loving little girls. You wanna give her another shrimpy? I wanted to take you in and play with you. I know. You know, growing up here in America, when you meet people like you who had to start from scratch, what do you love about being here in America? The thing that I love the most, I guess, is uh, freedom. I grew up in Mexico City in a, a very poor neighborhood, one of the most dangerous cities in the world. And when I look back, you know, all the struggles I went through, and I just feel so lucky, and, and this is what I love the most, just enjoy life every day, one day at a time. <laughs> and that, my friends, is the lesson for all of us. Find what you love, and if you can find a job doing it, Hi. it'll never feel like work. <laughs> I love your story. Love Thank your story. You. Thank you, David. Oh, David, we thought Rene was very cool. I love what he was told, be a grain in the sand, more shiny than the other one. Listen, I'm very freaked out by octopuses. <laughs> yeah, or, is it octopi? Octo is it? I, I really don't know. I'm not, octopi? yeah. More, uh, octopi, octopi, I looked it up. Octopi, but you can really see his passion and enthusiasm for it, and I really appreciate that about him. Gail, I know octopus weirds you out, but I'm telling you, yes. it was the most, ten it, like, tactical experience that I've ever had. I mean, to what have that thing climbing like, up on you and to feel the suction, the suction cups on your arm. I mean, it kind of freaked me out and I, I wanted to pull away, but it kept going up my bicep and it was weird, but up it gave bicep. me an affection <laughs> for an animal I've never had before. It was so surreal, y'all. Well, David, thank you, you very it. much. It's a yeah, great you story. Loved it. Yeah. It's a great story. No more calamari for David.